Welcome to the Sunday Talk Show with Roxanne. And as usual, I'm always happy to be on the air and Facebook with everyone. So today we'll be talking about cultural difference about beauty. As usual, feel free to call our toll-free number anytime at 1-800-371-1009. Or you can just send us Facebook messages anytime during the show to ask your question, to share your idea. So for those watching us through Facebook, you can all see that you have a guest speaker today. So let me introduce you, Mr. Ian Adams. He's a senior underwriter and he's a father and have extensive experience in banking. So be able to understand and appreciate the difference in people has been really special. And he has been like a mentor of, for many youth. And today he's very, very excited to bring more clarity about the misconception that most of us have regarding beauty and also to encourage us. So thank you very much, Ian, for coming in today. Roxanne, it is my pleasure being here. Thank you for having me. You're very welcome. Thank you so much. I'm sure that you're going to have a lot of fun yeah, and sure a lot of new things. <laughs> thank you. I'm sure we will. Perfect. So let's just start right away. We know that internal and external beauty are very, very important. But unfortunately, in our society, we tend to focus more on the external beauty, which is our outer appearance, and less in our internal beauty, which is the essence of our soul. So let us know that internal beauty is more stable and it actually defines someone's character. Uh, while the external beauty is more unstable because it changed throughout time. It changed depending on the culture. It changed depending also on the people. So I really like to emphasize that we have to remind ourselves that we are fearfully and wonderfully made by God. So why are we having uh, that much so uh, low esteem of ourselves? regarding our beauty. So in actually, uh, I have, uh, when I was doing like my research and also my own experience, I have found out that most people focus more on their external beauty than into their internal beauty. So what are your thoughts about it? And what are the reasons that might lead those people to feel more or be more concerned about how they look externally? That's very true, Roxanne. Um, we just need to look around us. Okay. Everywhere we go, we're bombarded with images of beauty. Oh, yeah. We go to the mall, we go to the hospital, we go to the grocery store. Kids go to school. Even, you know, you go to the, the washrooms, you're bombarded with beauty. <laughs> yeah. There are these images out there that is telling you that this is how you ought to be. This is how you ought to look. This is how you, you know, you ought to be. This is, this is, this is the image that you are supposed to aspire to. Oh. In other words, what it's telling you is that, hey, there is something fundamentally wrong with you, and we are here to fix you. This is the trap that we tend to get into. You know, we have to be cognizant of the fact that, you know, what the advertisers are trying to do is basically to sell a product. That's what they're doing. Like you mentioned, image is mm -hmm. sometimes based on culture. You know, mm -hmm. I, I should I should emphasize that the external image, yeah. in most cases, is based on culture. Because that's the one that's on stem, Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And it's also based on the fact that it changes over time and it changes. You know, I was looking at um, at uh, a drawing that Leonardo da, da Vinci did. It's the Mona Lisa. Uh -huh. And I think that drawing was done in the 16th century, around 1500, 1503. Okay. And the... The image of a beautiful woman then was a you know fairly plump woman. Oh. You look at the image of the Mona Lisa, and to, in today's standard, she would be considered to be fat. However, back then, that was the image that was prominent. Oh, yeah. That was the popular image. That's the image that everybody wanted to be. Fast forward that to let's say the 1930s. Mm -hmm. You know, a woman's image was you know, based on the hourglass shape, you know, mm -hmm. that, that, that shape. You know, fast forward that into the 80s, and you realize that the image changed. Yeah. You know, women were wanted to be more thinner, slender, you know, they wanted to have a more leaner frame. 
So that external image is something that over time changes. Yeah. And if one prescribes to that, then it's almost feel, being like a yo-yo. You know, <laughs> you're going back and forth, you're going back and forth. Yeah, and the, the real issue is you know, who you are. And that's you know. so difficult to keep it up with that though. Absolutely, absolutely. I personally can't keep up with it. You know, I remember looking at my dad's clothing, you know, back in the 1970s and 60s. Yeah. And I remember saying to my dad, wow, interesting pants. Because the same <laughs> the same the same pants that we wear today yeah. is basically the same pants that he wore back in the 70s and early parts of the 60s. Oh, wow. So it's a matter of time. But the thing is that those type of clothes are coming back again. Those type of clothes are coming back again. Oh, yeah. You know? The issue with image is not about the fact that it's coming back. It's about, you know, are you comfortable in your skin? That's you know, who you are as a person. The outward uh, exterior is, 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 is temporary. And that's for sure. And now you mentioned something very interesting about like the culture. Yeah, so I know really like culture play a huge influence on what it means for someone yes. to even feel beautiful. But unfortunately, again, culture also focus on the external beauty. Yes. Yeah, and talking about event culture, I actually have a video that I like. I would like to share with the whole audience. The video is actually about like one of the immigrants uh, sharing her cultural clashes about her own experience regarding beauty. So let's watch this video from the Lali Bride, and the title is Self Image Beauty. Video, please. What if up was down? What if black was white or hot was cold? What if suddenly all you have believed your whole life to be true become false? I was born and grew up in Togo in West Africa and in my culture, a thin body is not synonymous to beauty. Being thin was considered unhealthy, probably poor and definitely not beautiful. As a thin child, I suffered endless negative remarks from family and friends. I was bullied at school because of my size, and home was no relief. I remember my parents submitting me to interrogation sections in order to find an emotional or psychological cause to my weight. I remember my mother being really worried that I would not find a husband unless I put on some weight. She had a legitimate fear because not only thin is not considered beautiful, but also the spread of AIDS in Africa has caused thinness to be easily associated with illness. I spent hours in doctor's visit uh, with the hope to find a way to increase my, my appetite. And many times I was prescribed a regimen in vitamins. And sometimes, I remember one time a doctor suggested that I take an antidepressant, which side effect would cause a weight gain. <laughs> I tried all kinds of, of special diet, but nothing really worked. I was miserable. Then in my 30s, I moved to America, and suddenly, I was beautiful. <laughs> What was once a negative has become a positive. What was looked down upon is now praise. Should I believe that the truth I believed in all these years was a lie? Should I start believing in this new truth that I was beautiful? This was eye-opening for me. I realized that my actual satisfaction and, and, and happiness came from believing that everyone around me value and accept my body type. I, I, my satisfaction, my happiness was not about my body or about, about who I was, but about being accepted. The same body that made me feel so sad and miserable is the same body I'm now proud of. I realized that I let other people's opinion determine my joys and sorrows based on what the two cultures have defined as beauty. How often do we buy into a trend, an opinion, a perception, or accepted views or value just for no other reason than to fit in? How do we form our opinions? Why does nearly every magazine or commercial portray a thin girl as the face of their product? Why are there nearly 500 million results generated by the Google search simply by typing in the words 
weight loss. I'm a proud mother of two girls, Elta and Odia, and my hope for them is that they will never let any cultural standards or prejudices stain the way they feel about their self-image. I feel it's important for all of us to realize the role that people around us play into how we form our opinion and how more often our values are affected by the swings of this changing society. I, I believe that being aware of this will affect our well-being, personal development, and positively impact the way we treat others. Thank you. What? Oh no, I have suspicious activity on my credit card. You know, yeah. with BMO, you can just text them back. Wow. Wow, okay. That is really like it clashes that many of us experience within, uh, even within the same country. Yes. Like, I mean, like in Cameroon, for example, you have like 253 tribes. And well, moving from one tribe to another one, you, they have like a different way to define beauty. So many of us like experience that. And it becomes even like more difficult or the difference become even more larger when you leave your country and move to another country. Wow. So what are your thoughts regarding the video in? Interesting video. Um, when I saw that video, I thought about us here in the Western world. Yeah. You know, our focus is, you know, trying to be thin, trying to fit into that model type mold. Mm -hmm. But here we are in, in, I believe it was in Togo, that the emphasis there is on a, you know, a plump a woman a bigger body type. Mm -hmm. So it was very interesting to see, uh, you know, how, how she talked about them, the magazines in, in North America, you know, focus on this thin, uh, I don't want to say frail, but this, this thin, uh, this, this thin shape. Mm -hmm. It would be interesting to see you know, what the, what the, the marketing is, is like in, in Togo, mm -hmm. you know, if the magazines would have plumper or fuller type bodies, oh, I guess so. you know, <laughs> That video, you know, it, it tapped on quite a few things. It's psychological because she was, she was to the point where her, her, her parents thought that there was something, you know, fundamentally, un mentally unstable with her. The fact that she was, she was, she was presented to a physician, to a doctor, oh, yeah. to try and figure out, you know, what exactly is wrong. You know, that's taken it to the extreme. And, yes. you know, flash forward to the Western world. That's mm -hmm. exactly what we do here as well. Because we take beauty to the extreme, you know, women and to men with plastic surgery. We want to improve our faces, we want to improve, you know, just the exterior. One person comes to mind when I think about that. I think about Michael Jackson. Mm -hmm. oh. And uh, it's funny, you know, you look at Michael Jackson, you know, when he was an upcoming uh, a pop star back in the, the early uh, 70s. Mm -hmm. And you look at Michael Jackson today. And it's really difficult to 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 identify that hey this is this is one of the same person yeah. because his image has completely changed oh, yeah. completely changed yeah. so you know it, it goes to say that that you know what we were talking about there in terms of time mm -hmm. you know it, less emphasis should be placed on the exterior you know That's and so more sure. emphasis needs to be placed on the on the inner man yeah. on the soul you know what do you think of yourself. You know, what makes you happy? You know, it's not about what makes somebody else's happy. You know, what's advertised out there is basically to sell products. You know, there is a there's a product for everything. You wake up in the morning and you don't feel like going to work. There's a product for that. It's the same thing. You know, you wake up in the morning and you look at yourself, you know, like, you know, my arms are too, you're too big. I, I need to go to the gym. Or, you know, I need to have that six-pack like, you know, Brian Gosling. Or I need to look that. I need to have the hourglass shape like Beyonce. You know, that's just temporary. You know, yeah. personally, I wake up in the morning and I say, you know what? I'm okay. I I'm comfortable with myself. You know, the fact <laughs> is not about how I look, but the fact is, hey, I woke up. You know, there are more pressing things for me to worry about per se yeah. than about my image. But I know it's a little bit different. I'm, a, I'm an older person. And, you know, when you're younger, you know, you've got peer pressure and all of that <laughs> stuff. But hey, you know, if you're grounded in who you are, then, you know, image is just, for me, it's just a temporary passing. Not that I don't look at myself and, you know, don't try to improve, mm -hmm. but for me, it's just temporary. I see. And I do like the fact that you say it's actually psychological. So it's something that I really want to emphasize because it's so helpful that your loved one yes. are the one worrying of your, of, because of your beauty. 
and if you worry like that yourself you will end up worrying yourself and end up like uh saying like oh really i'm not really beautiful yes. and that's what was happening in the video with the lady so really my advice would be that as a parent or as a friend or as uh someone close to other people we really have to be mindful of our words because it really come it can make a difference in someone's life it can change even how people think about themselves okay. so yeah it's very important to be mindful about that right yes, yes. yeah and i just want to know don't you think that is also like when you focus more on the external beauty it, it means that we are kind of like people pleaser or you think that is actually um I mean, like, probably like in, in Africa, like the video that we just saw, it was about Togo, right? Do you think that, like, the parents, they were worried more about, like, what people were thinking outside, or they were genuinely worried about how she looks? You, you know, it could be a combination of both. Okay. You know, I think the parents are, you know, could be genuinely worried about the fact that their daughter may never get married. Oh, yeah. Because, you know, their culture emphasizes that you know a beautiful woman is a robust woman is a oh, big woman. Awesome, so you know if, if if i've got two daughters you know one is very very thin and one is robust you know chances are and and the cultural norm is to for a woman to be you know pump then chances are my thin daughter will be home with me for the rest of her life as a parent that's not necessarily what you want so i'm thinking they were also thinking along those lines as, as well. You know, my daughter needs to fit the societal norm to be able to go out into the world and and, and, and make her own life for herself. You know, she needs to be attracted or attractable to a certain to a certain man. Mm -hmm. And being plump, you know, that's the flavor of the day, that's the culture. So, you know, that's what was pushed and that's what was emphasized. That's what they believed, that's what they thought was the right thing to do. Oh yeah. Okay, I see. Oh, wow. Thank you for your answer. And also, like, when we're talking about beauty, we tend to always just focus on women. Or like, okay, women, <laughs> women change and everything. But I do believe that also men are so concerned about beauty also. And some men might be even having that low, low self-esteem of themselves. So as a man, actually, did you experience that kind of cultural clash when you moved in Canada? I did experience cultural clash when I moved to Canada. Um, not necessarily in terms of bodily image, because the, the you know, my, I, I was pretty comfortable with my image from a very early age. Uh, the cultural clash that I experienced was primarily with, um, you know, the differences in my, you know, first and foremost, my color. Uh -huh. You know, because I am a black male, therefore, you know, I was different. I am a West Indian, so therefore I spoke differently. My accent is different. Oh, you know, talking about the accent, of course. And uh, and and typically, my you know my general understanding of the world was was somewhat different. You know, I I tend to be a little bit more more practical, okay. more if you want to say fundamental. Mm. You know, than 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 being more open. Yeah. So those are the cultural clashes in which I had. And uh, at a very early age, it was it was it was it was pointed out to me that hey, you know, you are different. Okay. And uh, and if you want to survive in this society, if you want to survive in this world, you have to assimilate. You have to be more like us. Oh, that's you know, good. Everyone that's has good. to that's correct. Nice. Everybody has to be in coming to the mountain pot. Canada is a mountain pot. That's it's a mountain thing. pot in many different areas. You know? Yeah. But you as an individual as well, you need to choose mm -hmm. as to whether or not this is really the type of melting pot that you want to be in. You know, when it comes to your body image, is that really where you want to go? Is that how you want to be? That's a choice that the individual needs to make. Right. You know, I chose to retain and to keep my identity, mm -hmm. to stand firm in what I believed in, stand firm in my culture, in my mores, and in, in my norms. And that has sustained me throughout my life. Okay. And that's something that I impart on. On, on, on anyone that I speak with. You know, differences, being different is not a bad thing. Being different is quite good. Oh, you know, we can't all be the same. God never made us to be the same. That's why we right? are all unique, right? We're unique. Okay. We're made in his image. We're unique, but we're all different. Perfect. Just imagine if we all had to be the same. We wore the same dresses, we spoke <laughs> the same language, we ate the same food. You know, there wouldn't be any need for diversity. I see. Oh, that's good. 
So everyone has to remember that we are all unique and you have all, everyone has their own criteria. So yeah, so just embrace the difference that you are, you have in yes. you. That, that is actually different from someone else. So yes. thank you so much. And in like actually two hours, like our discussion, I can notice that those cultural clashes or even having that low self-esteem of right. ourselves that we experience are uh, mainly due because we focus so much in our external beauty. Yes. But I believe that uh, that unfortunately, like when you just focus on the external beauty, we will end up always being prisoner of ourselves. And that's not really good. So my advice would be that we have to also lean into focusing on the internal beauty, right? Yes, definitely. You know what? Internal beauty makes a person beautiful. Yeah. It really does. You know, internal beauty is long lasting. It's not temporary. Okay. Internal beauty is what actually makes people fall in love with you. Okay. You know, when two perspectives, you know, mates see each other yes you're attracted to the physical but that's just a physical attraction what really makes me or makes you or a man or woman for that matter fall in love with each other mm -hmm. it's not necessarily what's on the outside but it's what's really here but that's it's not what's what, on the inside but that's not what many <laughs> women think though they actually like i have been like talking to some women right and they were like oh no uh, nowadays, like men, they prefer a woman to be this type of shape or this kind of skin color, and that's why they need to do in order to be more attractive. So, what is the advice that you have to give out there for all, all those ladies? You know, the advice is everybody has a preference in terms of what they like. Oh, okay. You know, what attracts you, that's what you gravitate to. Mm -hmm. If you're a man or woman who likes a, a thinner shape frame that, that's attractive to you, then you go after that. If you're a person who likes a plumper, heavier frame shape, then that's perfectly fine. Okay. But at some point, mm -hmm. you have to, I wouldn't say ignore, but you have to go beyond that exterior image. Oh, and you have to look into the mm -hmm. person's soul. You have to look into the person's you know, character. Mm -hmm. And that's what really makes you fall in love with that person. Mm -hmm. What type of person are you? How compassionate are you? You know, are you a happy person? Are you a, a are you a, a joyful person? Those are the internal. Those are the internal intangible things that you okay. don't see on the exterior, mm -hmm. but those are the things that you need. Okay. You know okay. to survive. Those are the things that you need in a relationship in a couple. And when you have those, it, it always stays there. But actually, Absolutely. it doesn't change when you're moving from one culture to another culture, right? Absolutely. Oh, that's Absolutely. so perfect. Yeah. Absolutely. Not. So we really have to be working also in our internal beauty. Yes. So like, in like, what advice can you actually give to someone that doesn't feel beautiful because of X, Y, uh, Z reason, and now the person is actually hearing us and want to actually take some step to change their view of themselves? You know, the advice that I give is typically it's self-searching. Is you know, try to figure out who you are. Okay. Ooh. You know. Who am I? Identity. Who oh, am I? Yeah. You know, you need to know who you are before yeah. you can start making changes, you know, to to yourself. <laughs> you you have to understand me, the man, the inner man. To me, that is that is paramount. You know, okay. you know that could be grounded in spirituality. Oh. Could be grounded in faith. Mm -hmm. You know, it could be grounded in culture. It could be grounded in many different things. But okay. you first need to identify who you are. What's mm -hmm. important to you? You know, what brings you joy? What brings you happiness? Mm -hmm. Because, yeah, your beauty temporarily, you know, brings you some joy and happiness. Mm -hmm. But remember, over time as well, beauty fades. That's for sure. Yeah. You know, the way you are when you're 20 years old will not be the same way you are when you're 40. Will not be the same when you're 50. Will not be the same when you're 60. That's the external beauty that will fade with time. Absolutely. Okay. However, the, 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 the character mm -hmm. that you have developed inside that actually improves, or I should say, it should improve okay. as you age. So that is way more important than the exterior. I do agree with you. Yeah. Oh, perfect. That's so amazing. Yeah. So like, it, just like in them to be like more practical, because you know sometimes like, okay, this is what you have to do, right? Like, oh, you have to work on your internal beauty, and like, okay, so I guess like some of us are asking ourselves, so how can we like practically work in our internal beauty? So, I mean, how do you do yourself? 
for me, I know you're a human. <laughs> <laughs> you know, for me, I, I, I have to give credit to to my parents, to oh. my upbringing, to my background, to my culture, because from an early age, it was instilling me that I am a person of value, I'm a person of worth, mm-hmm. that you know I am not judged based on my parents, how I look, or how much money I have or don't have, mm-hmm. but I am judged on my character, I am judged on how I treat others. I am judged on my outlook on life. I am judged as to whether or not I think the glass is half empty or the half full, or, or the glass is half full. You know, that's what I impart on people. This is what this is what makes me me, and that sustains me throughout my entire life. Mm-hmm. If you don't have that as a person and you're seeking that, I would say, you know, you know, there there are many avenues to get that. You can speak to your elders. You can speak to your, to parents if you're comfortable doing that. Mm-hmm. You can get advice from your from your local church. You can get advice from from you know many many places. Oh, okay. However, that advice should be should be based mm-hmm. not on what people see, but basically as to who you are. Try to develop the inner person. Try to develop the inner man. Right. And by doing that. You know, you, mm-hmm. you, um, yes, life, life is better. Life is you are better. happier. Yeah. You know, a, a person who is beautiful on the inside is a happy person, right. is a joyful person. Yeah, because that would project outside. That projects right? towards the outside. I right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Take it then. Welcome to the Sunday Talk Show with Roxanne. So, how may I have? Hello? Can you hear us? Hello? Hello. I'm very sorry, I can hear you guys. Yeah, so uh, if the person that was trying to call us is hearing me right now, you can always go if you are watching us through Facebook to just like type your question or share your idea and you will be happy to answer the question for you. Yeah. So in just like going back again on what you were speaking, like, yeah, I do agree that we really have to work on our internal beauty. And something that personally I have been doing, right? Uh, I know like just by knowing who I am, because I know you mentioned about knowing your identity is so important. It's actually uh, helping you a lot to now know your standard, what you stand for, and you don't, uh, define yourself anymore by what people say or what the culture say that you feel comfortable with yourself. So that was the first thing that I, I did, kind of self uh, examine myself and ask myself, trying to know who I am really. Mm-hmm. And in order to do that, I know a lot of prayers and reading the words of God actually helped me to know who I am. And the second thing that I did is actually uh, I sat and I kind of write my witness and strength because that is also very important. Witness might be something that people have told you. They can like, oh, you have to work on this side of your life or in this side or this type of character and write my strength and now focus more on working on my witnesses in order to improve. So that's also something that I did. And... When we are talking even about um, reading the book in the Bible, I remember reading the some of the uh, some the one about like the woman, like the, how the, she was walking, the way she was behaving. So that's also something that I have been using in order to uh, try to look like her. So basically, like everyone has to just uh, find out the routine, what works best for them. But again, the most important thing is know who you are not what people are saying that you are. Very, very important. So, yeah. And in and what about like for parents that are actually listening to us? Because I <laughs> did like what you shared with us, that your parents has played a huge 
positive influence on you, on how you see yourself. So like for parents that are, are watching us right now and, they, uh, and those parents that have kids, what is the advice that you have for them today? Before I get into that, just let me read off a little bit of stats in which I have here. Oh, wow. It says, <laughs> it says 53% of 13-year-old girls don't like their bodies. Oh, no. And that increases to 78% by the time they reach the age of 17. Most models that you see on TV or in advertisements are insecure because they're constantly thinking about how they look. They're constantly thinking about, you know, am I beautiful enough? Do I fit this mall? Am I this the right size? Am I, you know, does my makeup look good? Does my hair is perfect? They're constantly going over in their mind about their image. Mm -hmm. So they're insecure. Only 40% of women identify themselves as being beautiful. 40% of women identify so, themselves as being beautiful. So where are those 60%? Those 60% like, you know, they need to do a lot of self-searching, you know, and, and some of the, the areas of which you talked about, you know, self-assessment, you know, mm -hmm. you know, so analyze beautiful. yourself, you know, write it down, your pros and your cons, your your at your advantages and you know your strengths and your weaknesses. Mm -hmm. You know, parents have a very important role to play. Uh, you know, yeah. it's important as to you know what do you feed into your child at an early age. You know, you have to feed positive remarks, positive Perfect. words into mm -hmm. that child. Okay. You have to tell the child that they're beautiful no matter what. Mm -hmm. You have to tell the child that society doesn't determine who they are. That society doesn't determine mm -hmm. you know you know where they go. It may be an impediment for some, but you have to push, you have to force, you have to, mm -hmm. you have to continue that. Okay. You know, I was fortunate enough to get the positive reinforcement, okay. you know, from my parents, especially my mom. Mm -hmm. My mom always said to me, you have no excuse. You have no excuse. Okay. You know what you have to do, do it. Mm -hmm. I got that from my aunts and my uncles, from my nieces. I remember even my principal back in school. Oh, wow. When I was even in, your education. My, edu yeah, my education, my principal reinforce the fact that you were judged by the content of your character. Dr. King said that. You were judged not by your outward experience. You're not judged not by how you look. You're judged by here, by the inner man, the content of your character. And that's what you should be judged at. And that's what parents such as myself needs to be reinforcing into our young ones and letting them know that, hey, it's okay not to be the same as somebody else. It's okay to be you. There's absolutely nothing wrong in being you. That's how God made you. That's you know, right. God made you, you know, in his image, fearfully and wonderfully made. Of course. You know, yeah. and that's <laughs> that's how that's how we, that's that should be your outlook on life. Perfect. You know, that that I am made in God's image. Perfect. So who do I who do I strive to be like? Do I strive to be like, you know, the, the person that I see on TV, or do I strive to be more like God? Okay. I choose to strive to be more like God. That's for sure. That's yeah. for sure. Thank you so much, Ian. And in terms of like uh, starting, uh, like, like, do we have like a, an age that we have to start reinforcing the beauty identity into our kids? You know, kids kids get bombarded with images from a very early age. You know, so think then, about this. Yeah. You know, uh, a toddler. Okay. A toddler knows Ronald McDonald. Uh -huh before they can speak even their first word. They can identify with that image, the <laughs> image of McDonald's. Yep. You know, in North America specifically, you don't need to tell a kid about McDonald's. It's almost like it's in their <laughs> DNA. They know what McDonald's is. Sure. So therefore, as a parent, it is incumbent for you to reinforce in that child from a very early age, from the time that child can, can understand, can you know, have a self of, of themselves, mm -hmm. you should be instilling in that child their self worth, uh -huh. their value, uh -huh. their importance in this life, uh -huh. you know, their differences, and to appreciate and cherish and honor those differences. Okay, thank you very much, Ed. Yeah, okay, thank you very much for everyone that has tuned in. And I didn't see a message from uh, Isata. Thank you very much, Isata, for your comments. I can see here. Oh, she, those who don't know me yet, my name is what? Yeah, I can see that as I said that some sometimes the discrimination of society against weight can make it hard for people to be themselves. 
Yeah, as I said, I do agree with you. What are your thoughts about that? Thing? You know, it's it's it is it is it is quite tough. It is quite tough. Now, I have never been overweight, so I can't say that I sympathize. You know, I'm, I'm sorry, I can't say that I understand, but I sympathize with those uh, you know people who may be perceived to be overweight. Mm -hmm. It's unfair to judge a person based on how they look. That's so unfair. For me, I look into the person's soul. I look into the person's character. Yes, what I see or what I might see at first sight may be a you know a fuller bodied person, mm -hmm. but I train myself to look beyond it. I train myself to you know just close my mouth and mm -hmm. open up my ears and listen. Yeah. You know that's how I view people. You know we 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 can't continually be you know putting everyone into the same mold into the same box. You have to you have to fit this criteria. You know, yeah. not everyone in the world is a size six. That's for sure. Not everyone in the world, you know, is a size sixteen. That's for sure. There are variances in between, uh -huh. and where you fall in that spectrum, that's who you are. Your metabolism, you know, how you were made, your DNA is the one that determines sometimes your weight, your size. You know, for instance, if you come from a family background mm -hmm. where you know your family members are tall mm -hmm. you know they're over six feet they're over six feet five chances are you are going to be six feet five and there's absolutely nothing that you can do about that yeah, right sure. mm -hmm. same as weight as well to mm -hmm. some degree to some degree for me as long as you are a healthy weight that's so important as long as you're yeah. you're comfortable with your weight and it's not impeding your health it's okay. Perfect. Who am I to judge? Yeah, no, but yes. judge. God is the only judge. That's perfect, yeah. And when we're even talking about that external beauty, I just want to remember, like, um, within the Bible, actually, the book of Proverbs 31, verse 30, it says that charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting. But the woman who fears the Lord is to be uh, praised, right? So, like, I mean, just to emphasize on the fact that really beauty fades, right? Therefore, if we put all our, our attention just in our external beauty, it will certainly fade away. So yes. we really have to put our attention on something that is that will stick with us forever. And that's actually the internal beauty too. Yeah, so that's so amazing. And thank you for giving more clarification about what uh, Isata has said. So. That's great. Yeah. So, and in now, I just want to know, do you have like any specific like, tips to share with us? I mean, like kind of uh, for us to remind ourselves all the time about like who we are and how we feel about our beauty. Do you have like any specific tip for us? You know, the, 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 the tips in which I, I would impart on anyone is to, to try to love yourself. Love yourself. Try to oh, love yourself for who you are. Mm -hmm. You know, don't subscribe or prescribe to what someone else think of you. Mm -hmm. You know, try to understand you and who you are, your position, your role in, in life. Yeah. You know, um, get a, for me, you know, I'm speaking personally. Mm, yeah. <laughs> you know, spiritual grounding is important for me. Okay. You know, because when I go back to the word and I read the word, it grounds me. Yep. It, it, it filters out all the stuff that happens around me, all the external stuff, mm -hmm. and brings me back to the core. You know, who am I trying to please? Am I trying to please men? Or am I trying to please God? Right. And once you answer that question, you realize that everything else around you that surrounds you, it's null and void. Okay. You know, your, your body image becomes less important. And, you know, your internal image becomes more important. You know, how do you treat others? How do you interact with people? Mm -hmm. You know, what do other people think of you? Are you a kind person? Are you a helpful person? Are you, you know, humility is very important. Mm -hmm. And believe me, you know, that, that inner beauty creates power because once you have that inner, inner beauty, you become a powerful person. That's for sure. And you become a successful person. Success doesn't necessarily mean money. It's not just a financial thing. Yeah, it's even about like the way you think, absolutely. you resonate, your wisdom. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. 
you, you, be, you, you, know? be, you become a much, much more grounded person yeah. in life. And that's what we all strive to be. We all strive to be better. You know, better. Awesome, yeah. Better, better. Don't get me wrong. As I said, as I mentioned before, the physical is important. You know, I try to go to the gym as often as I can. And the often you go there is try. <laughs> I don't always do it. Okay. But I try to go, I try to live a healthy life. Yeah. But I pay less, in, in, less less attention, less importance on my exterior and more importance in building that inner man, mm -hmm. building that inner person. You know, I always impart to my uh, to my to my to my kids. I said when I die. You know, you know, at my eulogy, I don't want anyone to tell lies on me. <laughs> you know, I want them to say about the type of person that I really was, you know, and that type of person that I really was does not include my image, how I looked, but what legacy did I leave behind? What did I impart on them and impart on others? That's important. That's right. Thank you so much. Wow. And what about the people that always try to compare themselves to other other people like compare yourself to God. That's good. That's compare good. yourself to God. That's good. Love yourself. Okay. You know, Beyonce will pass. There will always be another Beyonce. You know, Michael Jackson will pass. There will always be another Michael Jackson. Okay. You know, Brian Gospin will pass. There will always be another Brian Gospin. You can't be like a yo-yo going back and forth. Okay. You have to be grounded. You have to figure out who you are. Okay, that's good. But like, in like, what about like, you know, like, like my point of view. That's my point of view. I don't think that like comparison is always bad in the sense that you have like, in case that you have like a wider reason for you to try to compare or learn from someone. I mean, actually, I would say like learn from someone, so I can see you and I can see how humble you are. And like, oh, that's a good way to be like uh, humble. So I want to learn that from you. So basically, yeah, I'm not like comparing you, but I'm learning from you. So our advice also people that you can learn on other people, ask them how they have been doing it and try to uh, work on that talk. So that's not bad per se, but if you're just like trying to compare to someone else, like, okay, that's how she looks. I want to look like her. Then you keep uh, change all the time. It will never be stable. And again, that's the like that that fades away. So thank you so much. And in like any last words before we end or conclude the show today? You know, love yourself. <laughs> love yourself. Love yourself. Be comfortable in your own skin. Yeah. Be comfortable in who you are. Listen, mm -hmm. inner beauty exudes confidence. Yeah. It exudes power. Okay. It exudes character. Mm -hmm. It breeds happiness. It gives you peace. It gives you joy. Okay. You know, it shows your kindness. It gives, gives you respect. It gives mm -hmm. you humility. Those are all the attributes of inner beauty. I can't get those just by looking at a person. That's for sure. I can't. You don't know I have those just by looking at me. So you have to look beyond that. Try to look at my soul. Try to look deeper. That's what I implant. Thank you so much. I do like your advice to everyone. You have to love ourselves and we have to know who we are, our identity. That's so, so important. So, in conclusion, I like, never underestimate the power of our internal beauty. Like, beautiful uh, beauty is an internal matter and actually is projected from inside out. And we always, as it has said, have to remind ourselves that we are unique. And that God uh, see us as a masterpiece. And also, the world will always focus in the external beauty, but God focus more in the internal beauty, as He mentioned that in the book of Samuel 16, verse 7. So, therefore, where are you putting more your effort on? Something that you have to answer yourself. Again, self examine yourself is very important. And also, there's nothing wrong about like focusing on the outside look. It's very important too. But we have to find a balance. Finding a balance is so important. So from my experience, working from the inside to the outside has found to be very successful because our inside makes us who we are really. And that tends to be our real beauty. And therefore, while taking care of ourselves externally, 
beautiful because you really want to be presentable because again that's so important let's don't forget to shape also our internal beauty to our our prayers by reading the words of god and also by applying it in our day-to-day -day life because all those attributes will actually elevate our characters so we are at the end of today's show and i hope that everyone has enjoyed it and if that's the case please talk us up on facebook so next sunday we're going to speak about the same topic but that will be like in the french version so again feel free to call our toll-free number at 1-800-371-1009 you can send us a message to facebook by searching us with the name african um, voice network or uh, you can send us private message by using our email address info at tvradio.com so again thank you so much for listening to the sunday talk show with Roxanne. you have an amazing sunday thank you so much in for coming today and have a great great uh, day bye bye <laughs>